I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Central America. Today, we're going to be asking the question, why are 80% of Americans and most expats who move to Costa Rica leaving after less than two years? This is directly a question about that, and we're going to be responding to the video recently made by Grace Covington, who is living in Costa Rica and had a set of reasons that she feels people are leaving Costa Rica, and I think she has a great list, but... I think she missed the number one reason. So we're going to dig into that. We're also going to answer the obvious follow-up question is if this is impacting all these Americans who are moving to Costa Rica, is that also going to impact them if they're looking at moving to Nicaragua? That is a great follow-up question. Let's get to both of those questions right after the bump. Let's start our video with a quick congratulations to Grace Covington, who has a phenomenally successful video where she tackles a bunch of her items that she's discovered while living in Costa Rica that may be of some concern to other American expats who are looking at moving into the region. They may find that these are things that are impacting them, and they're relatively predictable if you're familiar with the region, such as there are a lot of bugs, things are warm, you're living in a tropical climate, uh, you're going to have more power and internet issues, although some issues that she brings up are pretty interesting. If you watch my videos, which primarily take place here in Nicaragua, some of the things that she lists as major problems in Costa Rica and why are extremely different than we have here in Nicaragua. And one of those is that their internet and power are less reliable. Now, we know that they're less reliable. Nicaragua is the most reliable infrastructure in the region. So that makes it obvious that Costa Rica would be at least less quality in that area than Nicaragua. But why is it so much worse? Well, she points out that in Costa Rica, they're working really hard at green power generation in order to make their power. You're going to say, but Scott, we know that Nicaragua is doing the same thing. You are correct. However, in Costa Rica, they're relying most prevalently on hydroelectric and wind power. Here in Nicaragua, we also have an extreme amount of solar, which often works just fine when those things are having problems. And we also have quite a lot of geothermal generation from the volcanoes. And the volcanoes are completely oblivious to weather patterns. So we're able to generate power from those in a much more consistent way. So while we may have some of the same fluctuations that Costa Rica does, they don't affect us the same. It's only a small portion of our power supply that's fluctuating. Whereas in Costa Rica, it is the majority of their power supply that is fluctuating. So that's a really interesting point as to why Costa Rica, while doing the same job that Nicaragua is in this case, just doesn't have quite the same resources active volcanoes that are perfect for geothermal power generation as Nicaragua, and that gives them a disadvantage when it comes to their power generation. But kudos for them for being green and working to do the exact same thing of not burning fossil fuels or whatever just to make electricity. That's fantastic. It's one of the things we love about Costa Rica, but it does come with its caveat. So a little bit of awareness with that. And of course, you can get a generator, you can get a battery and other things that you can use to offset that. But those kinds of things are often off-putting to people who are moving into a country and they're like, oh, here's another challenge challenge we have to deal with, but they're often things that are pretty easy. Of course, if you're putting in a generator and burning fossil fuels, it defeats the entire purpose of the green power generation in the first point. So hopefully that they're addressing that in some better way, such as with batteries or solar or whatever. Costa Rica does not have anywhere near the amount of sun that Nicaragua does. So that is a reason that's difficult down there. They're at higher elevation with more clouds, which is great for living. It's one of the reasons that people like Costa Rica is there's a lot of Costa Rica with cooler weather than Nicaragua. That's a big benefit, but it doesn't have as much sun to make that solar power. So it, it not everything's a win, right? You got you to gotta balance out the different factors. Overall, I think Grace does a great job going into what life is like in Costa Rica. Much of it is comparable to Nicaragua. There's very little that's significantly different. That's all good. And at the end of the video, I think you have a good appreciation that these are things that Americans or anyone moving into Costa Rica should be prepared for. But she leaves out what I truly believe is number one by far of a problem of going to Costa Rica, and it is specifically a Costa Rica problem. That problem is a lack of research. Now, there's two types of research. One is the hard and fast research, the absolute research, and that's what Grace is talking about. She's saying, like, this is a type of bug you could run into. If that's a problem for you, that's a problem. You can look that up about Costa Rica and know there these bugs are in Costa Rica. I don't want to be there. That's easy. That's the absolute research. But that I think people mostly do. She's assuming that mostly they don't and that that's why 80% of Americans don't make it two years in Costa Rica. But 
I think that there's a relative research and this is what's much bigger. There's two components to this. One is clearly they're not spending enough time in Costa Rica to determine if it's a place they want to move to. Now, trust me, I'm all about being adventurous and she makes the absolutely perfect point at the beginning of the video. Okay, so you came to Costa Rica and you decide it's not for you. That's fine. You gave it a try. No harm, no foul. And now you can move on to another country or you can go back home. Not a problem. You, you, you were adventurous. You took a chance. You discovered something about yourself, about the world. And now you're in a better position for the next thing you're going to do. She is spot on. Absolutely, Grace, you nailed it. If you are thinking that Costa Rica might be a place for you, just move. Go find out. You can't spend your life just in a decision paralysis while you try to figure out something that fundamentally you probably can't tell unless you go. So I do recommend visiting most countries before you decide to just move there. I am an, an, an exception. I am an exception to that, that I am very brave with just, you, you, you could tell me right now, Scott, you got to move to Syria tomorrow. You got to move to Iraq tomorrow. You got to move to China tomorrow. You got to move, you name the place. There's almost no place that I wouldn't be like, well, okay, that's no problem. Like, maybe it's not my first choice, but it's an adventure. that will be awesome. I'm not worried about actually moving there. The only places I generally am unwilling to move to are places that I ideologically find to be not something I want to support, right? So that's very few and far between, but that's, that's normally the issue, not like safety or, you know, whatever. Like, I can eat the food anywhere. I don't mind the safety anywhere, like, pretty much. So that kind of stuff, I'm very adventurous. And if that's who you are and that's your mode of going to Costa Rica, hey, look, I got nothing. I just, why not just show up and find out? I got to go somewhere, right? Then that's a great attitude. And then if you do end up moving on, which if you do that, you, there's a decent chance you will, then great. That isn't a problem. You didn't fail. Your goal wasn't to be permanent. Your goal was to find out. And you did, right? So perfect. But if you're going there with the intent of living, then you're going to be like, well, if this is a failure, if you then decide you need to move on. And that's realistic. So you want to do enough research, if at all possible, to at least eliminate the, oh, they have this bug, I didn't know. Oh, their power isn't the same as US, I didn't know. Oh, there's whatever problem, right? And you can watch Grace's video and get her opinion on what that, she has a, a decent list of things. None of them are showstoppers for most people, right? It should all be like really minor things. Oh, I gotta drive a little bit farther for this. I, you know, the rain's like this, like whatever, like very decent things. And a lot of times when people move on from a country, it's not because because of some catastrophic thing. It's because of tunings, right? Oh, this wasn't just quite right for me. It just cost a little bit too much. It was just a little too rainy, whatever. It's not, oh, it rained and I can't take rain, right? It's not like that normally. So that, that stuff is going on and people need to do that research and you need to have an idea if the country you're going to go to is going to support the lifestyle that you want. But that, of course, people are showing up in Costa Rica and going, oh, I, I didn't know what to expect from Costa Rica. I don't know why they went there, but that underpins a bigger problem that is the relative and that, that you get this in Costa Rica and you don't get it in most other places is that you get tons, especially of Americans and to some degree Canadians, less from other places, but you get tons and tons of people who show up relocating to Costa Rica and discovering that they've done no research reasonably at all. Costa Rica is the location where people go when they haven't done research. So you have a special group of people. If you go elsewhere in the world, we'll pick Honduras, right? If you go to Honduras and you look at the Americans that are there and the Canadians that are there, chances are there's always going to be some who did no research. They heard about the place they just packed up and went, but there's very few. Because when you're going to go to Honduras, one, you have not heard of it in the manner of it being the absolute must-go place. It's always going to be an adventurous place. It's always going to be a, you may not have ever considered this, but think about Honduras, right? that's going to be the mode it is presented in. And then people are going to very rarely just jump on and go like, I heard about Honduras, I'm jumping on the plane, right? They're going to be like, oh, I need to research this. I need to. So the overwhelming majority of people who are moving to Honduras have done so with some amount of looking at other options, considering it and choosing Honduras for some purpose. There's something that drove them to Honduras specifically over other options in almost all cases. But in Costa Rica, 
because it is the one country that everyone defaults to, basically anyone who's doing research, if you're looking at safety, if you're looking at cost of living, if you're looking at getting away from the culture of Americans and Canadians grouped together, like in Canada, you want to get away from the, like in the US and Canada, you want to get away from the enclave living, you actually want to move abroad, Costa Rica is going to be, in most cases, the first place you're going to rule out in the Western Hemisphere, because it is so packed full of people who are not looking for those things. They're looking to be around other Americans and Canadians. They aren't worried about the price of things. They aren't worried about the safety because it's not good at any of those things particularly. It's a beautiful country. It's a wonderful country. Lots of reasons to go to Costa Rica and there's reasons why some amounts stay. But the number of people who go, especially from North America to Costa Rica, is so high that that number represents primarily all or nearly all of the people who are moving out of the U.S. and Canada who don't do their research. Some also go to Mexico, but basically those are the two places. People are not going to Venezuela who did that. People are not who do the research. People are not going to Honduras who do their research. They're not coming to Nicaragua. They're not going to Peru, right? They might go to Ecuador. That has become one of those just go-to places, even though it's incredibly dangerous right now. People are like, did you know it's dangerous? And every traveler is like, Everyone knows it's dangerous. What are you talking about? Um, and Mexico, like there's just these places are just loaded with expats, Merida and Cancun and, you know, places like that. So they exist. But Costa Rica is number one as the expat place where you go when you don't know what you're doing. That doesn't mean that everyone who goes to Costa Rica doesn't mean, know what they're doing there. Of course, you look at that group, at least 10% of the people who are going do know what they're doing. They did do their research and it is a mix that works for them because it is a great country and there should be a number of people who choose it because it's fantastic. There's lots of reasons to choose Costa Rica, but most people who are choosing it aren't doing it for those reasons. They're doing it because they just accepted the default, right? And I work in business and we see this all the time. You can tell there are entire vendors who make all of their money by being the default, because they offer something else, right? Costa Rica offers this really cool vacation destination solution, and then a ton of people simply relocate there because, well, they went on vacation once, so they relocated to the one place they vacationed that was nice, and they did no further research. They didn't check if it made sense for relocation. They didn't check if it was better or how it was different than any of the places that were around it. They didn't compare it to other places. They didn't look at what the options were. They just said, I once went on vacation, therefore I'm going to move there, which is a horrible process, but that's exactly, for example, if people go and register a new domain online, right? If you work in the industry, you never, ever, host your website with the company that you registered with. Like that's just, and it's for so many reasons. We could spend an hour explaining just how many different ways that makes no sense and why it is a terrible decision and why common sense should rule it out in every case. And still 90 plus percent of people getting websites do exactly that. And so the companies that do that have no incentive to do a good job because they know you didn't do research. They're going to charge you extra. They're going to do a bad job because you're not shopping around. You don't know what you're doing and you're not researching. You're not asking for advice. They know this. They have no incentive to do a good job. Well, Costa Rica is kind of in the same boat. They know you're not coming there because you looked around and decided they were the best country. Almost always. They know that you just accepted the default and that they can you know, they can tax you as much as they want. They can give you whatever visa they want. You're going to take it because you're not you're not asking questions, you're not shopping around, you're not comparing to other countries. And so all the businesses you interact with, hotels, everything, they're going to treat you the same way. Because why not? That's how they make their money. And the market just keeps getting more and more expensive because people aren't evaluating it. They're not considering if it's expensive. They're not considering if it's safe. Why prioritize those things? Why would the government crack down on crime if people don't care? Why would businesses lower their prices if people don't care? They're not going to. That doesn't make any sense. So Costa Rica is in this spiral because it is the default location where everybody goes who isn't doing their research. And so you have just an outrageously large number of people who arrive in Costa Rica, mostly from the US and Canada, and they settle there and they think they're going to stay. And then they start discovering one of two things. They start discovering the absolutes. Oh, did you know it's warm? Oh, did you know it's a third world country that, that definitely does have some power problems? Not big ones, but little ones. Did you know that the food is not what we were expecting? Did you know it's not all like living in a resort? Like there's actually a country here that's like normal and has its own culture. Did you know not everyone speaks English like they did at the resort? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? We have to have a visa. We got to deal with residency. We have all these things. 
oh, this isn't what I was expecting. I thought life was going to be like a vacation that never ended simply because we moved to a place where we liked to vacation. But let me ask you, have you ever vacationed in the United States? Have you ever lived in the United States? Are those two things similar? Not really. Life in the United States is very little like Disney World, yet almost every American has vacationed in Disney World and every American has lived in America and the two are not intersecting lifestyles. The same thing in Costa Rica. You can go visit a resort on the beach, but moving to Costa Rica is very unlikely to reflect an ongoing living inside a vacation fantasy land. It could, if you're rich enough and you know exactly what you're doing, you can kind of recreate that and basically be on a permanent vacation. But most people don't have that opportunity, nor would they want it if they could, but that's what they're imagining. And so they move to a place like Costa Rica with this mindset of that's what they're going to get. And when they, when reality hits them, sometimes that's just a bit too much. Suddenly they're just living in Costa Rica like they were living in the United States, except now they don't have the things they're used to, the food they're used to, whatever. And so that is often a big shock. But the bigger shock, I think more often is if you then move to Costa Rica, it's very common, for example, to then visit Panama, to then visit Nicaragua. We're right around the corner, right? And then people start getting comparatives. Wait, do you mean that I could just cross the border? I'm just a couple hours away and it's safer and cheaper? Well, why did I choose this? I don't know why you chose that, right? You need to know what reasons are making Costa Rica better than all the other options. If you don't know that, then chances are it's not for you. And so if you're in that 80% that's going to leave after two years, there's a really good chance that you're doing so because you suddenly found out that the world is a much bigger, more vibrant place than you realized when you picked Costa Rica without planning. And now you know you need to do some planning. Now you know you could move out of Costa Rica and get even bigger uh, advantages in safety and cost of living in food or whatever than you were getting moving to Costa Rica in the first place. It doesn't mean that Costa Rica didn't prove to you to be a good step up from where you came from. Maybe you like it better than living in the United States. But I've talked to many Costa Ricans who are like, oh, I'm an American. I decided to move abroad. Costa Rica is where I went. And then after a little bit of time, they start talking to us in Nicaragua and they're like, hey, well, how is this in Nicaragua? And then they start saying, wow, that sounds way better than what I have. Why am I in Costa Rica when I could have so much more buying power and I could be safer? I could have more just flexibility living up in Nicaragua. It's only a couple, I can just put everything in a car, drive up and I can just stay and it's easier. My paperwork is easier. And that, that mindset that discovery opens their eyes and suddenly the world has more options for them. And chances are those options, at least one of them is going to prove to be better for them than the one that they fell into. Because it, in one case, they're, they're doing research and selecting what makes sense for them. And in the other, they're just taking whatever is offered without checking if it makes sense in either case, right? Is it absolutely makes sense? Yes, it has food that I like good enough. Or relatively, is it have food that is better than other places that I would like? then that, that would make sense. So because of that, we're going to see these massive outflowings over time because Costa Rica is where people go to make the mistake. Certainly, loads of people go to Costa Rica and absolutely love it. And certainly, loads of people go to Costa Rica who did research it. But no matter how many people do research it and choose it intentionally, far, far more are doing so because it is the default and they are not researching. And so you are always going to be not only looking at a large outflowing of people who've done that. But you, if you live in Costa Rica, are almost guaranteed to be surrounded by expats who are in the process of discovering that they didn't do their homework and are now in a situation that doesn't make sense for them, which is definitely not the best community building thing either, which then takes the people who did do their research and often encourages them to potentially move on somewhere else, even if everything else about Costa Rica works perfectly for them. They don't care about the, the safety issues. They don't care about the higher cost of living. All all they want is the beautiful scenery and they think Costa Rica has everything perfect for them. But this culture of this is a place that I didn't do my research and just it doesn't create a great culture to be around. And so a lot of people who did their research, even they end up wanting to move on because that's just not the the culture they want to be around every day. We see exactly the same thing happen inside Nicaragua, here where I live, right? We're talking about Costa Rica, but Nicaragua, we're just one country away. Inside Nicaragua, down in San Juan del Sur, that is basically our little Costa Rica. There, it is very, it's very close to Costa Rica. It's culturally very similar to Costa Rica. It has a lot of shared history. And we have the same problem that the majority of people who come to Nicaragua and do no research end up in San Juan del Sur. And while they're there, start discovering if Nicaragua is a place they want to be, 
if San Juan is even a part of the country they want to be in. And so, so many people who are in San Juan del Sur are either oblivious and just not noticing. And some of those happen in Costa Rica too, right? I didn't know it was so expensive. I never compared. I avoided going anywhere else. Okay, that exists. And we get the same thing in San Juan del Sur, but people who are in San Juan del Sur who then go visit Leon, then go visit Managua, then go visit Matagalpa are suddenly like, wow, the rest of the country is safer and cheaper and has more to offer. Why did I pick San Juan del Sur? And like Costa Rica, in some cases, San Juan del Sur has some really slam dunk great benefits. They have this beautiful bay. They have mountain views looking at the sunsets that nowhere else in the country has exactly. And that's absolutely beautiful and fantastic. And there's great reasons to choose San Juan del Sur. But that the fact that there are great reasons to choose San Juan del Sur doesn't change the fact that the majority of people who picked it picked it because either they did no work and just took whatever was the first thing they searched or someone who is a salesman knew same thing in Costa Rica, right? You start looking where in Latin America do I want to move? All the salesmen know they can make their highest profits selling Costa Rica. Same thing inside Nicaragua. They know the salesmen know they're going to make all their profits by selling San Juan del Sur. So if you hire someone, if you start paying money, Everyone's going to guide you to the highest cost, highest profit stuff. And that's San Juan del Sur in our case, Costa Rica in the bigger case. And so, so many people, because they don't want to do their own research. They want someone else to do it for them. They want to be handheld. Well, people who are holding your hand are going to look for where they can lead you to get the money from your wallet. And that is where they're going to lead you. So you find that that is occurring over and over and over again. So even in our own little microcosm, we see it happening. So the follow-up question is, how is this going to impact or does this impact? Americans and Canadians who moved to Nicaragua, do we see the same 80% failing within the first two years and moving on either back home or to another country? Well, the first piece of this, and this is actually interesting, is we can't tell that. And there's a very important reason why. So when you're moving to, to Costa Rica, most people, the vast majority, are going to register with the government and apply for visas to allow this to happen. This gives Costa Rica the ability to track people that are doing this. So they have a very good statistical handle on what's going on as far as people moving into the country, how long they stay, and then leaving. So Costa Rica can provide us with a lot of deep details here. Nicaragua is very different. There's no need to register with the government, and there's no paperwork to file when you come. And you can stay, in many cases, more than two years without ever needing to do anything. And so even people who have moved to Nicaragua may struggle to tell you if they fall into the same category as they would in Costa Rica or not. Because the idea that you have moved to Nicaragua is a little bit of a soft one. In Costa Rica, it's definitive. I am declaring that I'm going through some paperwork in order to stay long-term in Costa Rica. I'm moving to Costa Rica. Now, of course, some people are just coming for two years, three years, and then they maybe their job changes, they leave a little bit early so that they don't do what they intended. Or maybe they intended to just be short-term all along. That happens, but it's a uh, background noise. In Nicaragua, people come and they say, well, I'm just coming to stay indefinitely, and maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll go. A lot of people come and decide to stay, and if they do decide to leave, just like, you know, if you came and you said, I'm going to give it a try, this is my new home, and then by around two years, you leave and go back to your home country or move on to another country, there would be no one that you would report to. There would be no official paperwork that you would have done in most cases, and so that leaves this with a, it's a completely untracked thing. You would have to sit a person down and have a conversation with them and say, so when you came two years ago, did you intend to stay? And the number of people who you actually intend is kind of low because you're able to come and make that decision later. Whereas in Costa Rica, you have to make it relatively soon. In Nicaragua, you really don't. And for many people, they never have to. And so the idea that you're making that firm decision may not exist. And so that means that there's simply not that kind of reporting. The statistics that Costa Rica has does not exist in Nicaragua. So even if it's happening, we have no way to track it. But from logic, from looking at the situation, we don't expect the same things to happen in Nicaragua because it's the polar opposite of Costa Rica, where Costa Rica is the default choice in the region. If you do no research, you're likely to end up there. Nicaragua is the absolute not default choice. If you do a bunch of research, it's the last place you're likely to get a lot of information about because the United States State Department, Canada's equivalent of the State Department, they do all kinds of work to push people away from Nicaragua. Nicaragua has a tiny population, a very small tourism industry. You put all these things together and people don't have the same reaction, the same interaction, the same information about Nicaragua that they do about Costa Rica. They're going there against the grain, against the tide, not, I guess, against the stream, maybe, not just flowing along with everyone else. 
So the very nature of the thing that makes this happen, I believe, in Costa Rica, makes it not happen in Nicaragua. And when you, you live here and you talk to people and you see people move in, of course, there are some who fail. Absolutely. I have seen it happen. And every time I've seen it happen, it is someone who absolutely didn't do their research, whether it was someone who had no idea about the region, moved in with completely bizarre expectations and had zero zero appreciation for Latin American culture and had to go immediately because he had no interest in being around a Spanish speaking culture. Like he was not ready for non-English in any way, shape or form. That was someone who did zero research and just paid no attention and used no common sense. Other people came, but brought vehicles that made it very difficult to stay. They didn't do their homework on, does it make sense to bring custom vehicles? What, how much effort could that make? How much cost could that be? And, and just that drove them out. So people have this happen. But the majority are not having that happen, not that we see. Now, of course, in San Juan del Sur, we expect it to happen a lot more than we do in the rest of the country because we are selected as these are the areas where people did their research. They researched not just, you know, the region, Latin America, but they've researched their countries within Latin America. And if you're getting up here in Leon, you've researched the regions within the country, not just coming to Nicaragua and ending up in San Juan del Sur, where everyone who does no research on Nicaragua ends up. No, you're actually looking for a city that makes sense for you, maybe a town that makes sense for you, a community that makes sense for you. When you do that, the chances that you're going to be successful gets really high. But if you don't do it, your chances of being successful gets really low. And so here in Nicaragua, especially outside of San Juan del Sur, what we see on the ground is a very high success rate just like we would expect based on the very low success rate we see in Costa Rica. The exact same factors being applied in both cases should give us opposite results. And what we see, what we feel when we're in both places, the way that it looks on the ground definitely reflects exactly that. Huge failure rates in Costa Rica, totally predictable. Huge success rates in Nicaragua, totally predictable. Not in any way based on Nicaragua being a better place than Costa Rica or Costa Rica being bad, nothing like that. Both are awesome countries. Both are great potential destinations. Just Costa Rica gets way more people and the difference, right? Nicaragua gets a tiny number of people who've had to argue with every family member they know. No, it's actually safe. You are not thinking of the right place. You're getting propaganda. No, I'm going, even though you tell me I shouldn't, I'm going to use common sense and go. And Costa Rica is, oh, don't worry. I didn't, I didn't do any research, but everybody goes to Costa Rica. So, you know, it'll be fine. Right, which is exactly what you say when it won't be fine, right? It's the worst thing to say because everyone does the wrong thing. Like most people fail. Most businesses fail. Most people relocating fail. Why? Because they're not doing the research. It's not what makes sense for them. And Costa Rica represents where those people end up. So both places are awesome. Costa Rica is getting an entire group of people that Nicaragua essentially never sees and never will see. And that is the group that is failing. That group would likely fail anywhere that they went or nearly anywhere that they went. And it just is what it is. By the nature of doing your research, by the nature of watching this video, by the nature of putting in that effort, putting in the common sense, the effort to think, doing your research, you are almost certainly going to maybe not find the right place the first time, but your success rate overall is gonna be predictable, right? You're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go in, I know I'm gonna give it this much time, I know I can handle it this long, we're gonna decide if it's the right place, if not, I'm gonna move on, what's that gonna look like? And that can be part of your journey, what, rather than I am moving to this place, I'm committed, I have no idea why, I'm just gonna do it, and then being like, oh, I completely misestimated underestimated, overestimated, completely didn't understand what I was getting myself into. Now I don't know what to do. I need to move on in a failure mode, right? It's a completely different thing. So I don't think it's going to happen to Nicaragua. I don't think it is happening to Nicaragua, but if it was, we would have no way to know other than just what it appears like on the ground. But in Costa Rica, you can see it on the ground. You certainly see it in the statistics and you can predict it logically pretty easily. So thanks Grace for putting out that video. I think there's a lot of good information there. Go support her channel and what she's doing over there. She is a uh, woman entrepreneur uh, doing a channel about health and wellness and entrepreneurship and sometimes Costa Rica over in Costa Rica. And, uh, Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And do me a favor, I'm gonna pop up some videos on the screen, at least I'm gonna try to. If you would click on one of them, that tells the algorithm that this show led you on to more YouTubing, and that's what they like to see.